Elementor's new Flexbox containers are now becoming a popular alternative to standard intersections. Containers allow you to quickly create web page layouts much easier than typical intersections. This enables you to control how your content is displayed and streamline your web building workflow. By using Flexbox containers, you can improve page speed through linear code, gain finer control over responsiveness, and easily create more complex layouts. You can also achieve better design optimization and define more complex layouts when you use Flexbox containers. This is because they aren't constrained by columns and rows, which gives you more control over your layout. If you guys are new to Elementor, you guys have probably seen this message. That's because they plan to phase out intersections and replace it with the Flexbox container. So what's the main difference between intersections versus Flexbox containers? Number one, responsiveness. You can define how you want your content to be displayed across specific devices, screen sizes, and which order they're displayed. Using containers enables you to avoid stacking hidden elements across platform types and improve the overall user experience. Number two, layout control. You can achieve better design optimization and define more complex layouts when you use containers. This is because they aren't constrained by columns and rows, which gives you better control over your layouts. Number three, page speed. You can increase your page loading speed by using containers for page design. Containers improve page speed by minimizing the number of dividers or devs used for each section. Intersections often contain more dividers, unlike Flexbox containers. So let's go in detail and explain all the options with the Flexbox containers. All right, so here is a page that I quickly created using Elementor. Now let me demonstrate the old version of Elementor versus the new version of Elementor using the new Flexbox containers. So here we have this landing page, you know, it's just a, it's a normal landing page, right? And I wanna drag a button here, but I wanna add it to the right side. So if I were to take this button right here and try to drop it, you guys will see that I can only either add it below or above it, making it a little limited on how I can add elements to my websites. The new Flexbox container changes that and gives you a little bit more flexibility. All right, now here's the new Elementor Flexbox containers. Now let's say for instance, I wanted to achieve that same result where I were to take a button, right? Now you guys can see that if I were to take the button that it has the same thing, right? Where I can only add it above or below the button. However, there is the container layout, which allows me to drag this container. And now I can add in the elements I want to add inside this container. So I'll go ahead and just duplicate this really quick and I'll drag and drop these into the container here. Now with the new Elementor Flexbox container, we can now control all the elements inside of the Flexbox. For example, here we have the direction. I want the direction to be horizontal and I wanna put these in the center. You can see that we can use these controls right here to position these evenly and you can also style these any which way you want. You can also add gaps in between elements which was not able to do before so as you can tell, you do have a little bit more control using the new Elementor Flexbox containers. Let me give you another example. So here's another example. Here we have these three columns, right? Now let's say for instance, I wanted to align these items inside of this column. With the old version of Elementor, it was a little tricky. For example, I'll try to click on the edit column section and here we have some options where I want to make it middle, right? But if I want to put it in the center, you guys will see that's where the problem starts. I would have to go to every element and align these manually, but there's a lot of responsive problems when doing that. The new Flexbox container fixes that. Here is a website with the new Flexbox container. And if I were to click on the container, here you guys can see I have a lot more control over what goes on with the elements inside the container. So I can center this, you know, I can, uh, you know, they have a bunch of little design options here, but if I want to put it in the center like that, you can see that I can do that and then I can use these and combine these. So as you guys can tell, you know, we do have a lot more options and control over what goes on inside the containers. Let me give you guys one more example. Okay, so here's the last example and then we'll move on with the tutorial. So let's say for instance, I wanted to take this element and I wanna put it over here. Uh, before, I'd have to take this and then drag it over here and then with this element, I would have to take it and drag it over there. Now, I know that looks easy, right? But when you're building your website, sometimes you might take an element and then drag it there and like, oh, you know, what happened? And then you try to drag it back like that. And then sometimes, you know, the website would easily get broken, right? Now, I know that's a little bit of an exaggeration. You don't have to do this anymore with the Flexbox. You can control all the elements inside the columns. So here's the Flexbox. And let's say, for instance, I wanted to actually rearrange these, right? So here we have the direction. So instead of horizontal, I'll say, you know, let me see what this looks like reversed. And then I can also add in, you know, space here. And then I can control all of the 
elements right here using the justify content and align items. I know that doesn't look like much, but when you're building your website, the small things are kind of the big things. So now that you guys have a good understanding of the difference between the old version of Elementor versus the new Flexbox container, let's go back to the tutorial and design the website. All right, so in this part of the video, I'm going to give you guys more practice using the Flexbox container. Now, in this part, I'm going to give you guys a few different examples and just show you how to create specific sections using the new Elementor Flexbox container. So here we have two different columns, right? And we have a container within a container. So let me show you all how to recreate this. So over here, let's go ahead and uh, grab a two column row. Now for the first container, we're going to throw in some heading text, and then we're also going to throw in a text editor. However, I want to add in another container here. So I'm going to drag and drop this container, and we're going to put in two different buttons. So button one, and I'll just duplicate that for button two. But I'm gonna go ahead and change the color for this because I want to show you all the difference, right? I don't want you guys to get confused on which button's which. There we go. And then on the right side, we're gonna throw in an image. Okay, let's grab an image here and let's put it with this, this gentleman here. So we have the elements in place. Now we need to use the flex box to dictate and control where these elements go. So for example, here I'm gonna click on this first one and I want to make sure that this is centered, okay? And also I wanna make sure that this is center in the middle, right? Now notice how only this text goes, but these ones don't. These don't go because they're already being controlled by another Flexbox container. And the text editor actually acts independently. It's one of the only few elements that act independently because if you click on the elements and go to style, it actually has the own alignment right here. So uh, yeah, it does act independent. Now we're going to click on the next one here. And I just want to change the direction. And you can also change the position, right? Between center, to the end, to space around, and all these other options right here. So I'll just uh, leave it at center. And then of course we throw in a little bit of space here and there you go. So now you'll see that we have completely recreated this section using the Flexbox containers. It's a pretty simple example. So let's go to the next one. So next I'll be showing you how to create a grid layout for your images. Notice here how we have these images and these images are spread all the way till the end of the page right here. And this was all done using Flexbox. So let me show you guys how I quickly did this. So let's go ahead and make a new section and we're just gonna create one section here, one directional row. And we're just going to drag in the image right here. So image, and then we'll change the image to this one right here. And we're gonna add in one more image and then we'll use this guy right here. Now there is one caveat with using this strategy. The caveat is these images must be the same size. If they are a little different, what's gonna happen here is the images will actually look a little distorted and give you a more masonry look. For example, let me just go ahead and upload one that's not the same size just to uh, show you guys. Notice here how this image is a little bit uh, larger than the other ones. So if you want like a really nice clear layout, uh, they will have to be the same size. So going back to our original example, I'm going to now duplicate this and we're also going to duplicate this. So now you guys can see that we have these four images, but there is still work to do. So I'll click on edit container here. Now for the gap between elements, I want to select this as zero. And just remember, you guys can also reverse this layout as well but let's change it back to horizontal. Now you can see here how there's a lot of space here. And what I wanna do is I wanna reduce the space. Now you guys might notice that there is space here on the left and the right side. So all we have to do here is change this to full width and that's it. So now you guys will see that it stretches all the way across to the website. And we have just a little bit of space here on the bottom and the top right here and also the side. So all you gotta do is go to the advance, just put zero. And there you go. So now you'll see that there's no space and there's also no space on the left side or on the right side or the top or the bottom. That's just a cool trick you guys can use if you want to like implement images that spread across your website. All right, so next I'll show you guys how to recreate this specific section here. On the left side, we have an image and then we have these two blurbs. And these two blurbs are contained within this container. So I'll walk you guys through on how I did this. So over here, let's go ahead and go to a two column row. And we're first gonna grab an image, all right? And then I'll change the image here to this guy here. Then I'll grab an icon box. So icon box, drag that in there. I'll quickly design this. 
So now that I finished designing this element, I'm quickly just going to go ahead and duplicate it. Once that's done, I'm going to click on the flex box here and I'm going to tell them I want this in a horizontal manner, right? And next I want to go to the align items and I want to put this in the center. And just remember, if you guys want to change the position of this, like for example, maybe you want to AB split test and you want to put this image on the right side, you can do that actually using this container here by just changing it to reversed. And there you go. So that's how you guys can create that section using the Flexbox containers. Let's do another example. All right, so next let me show you guys how to create a landing page with the Flexbox containers. So this is just a basic ordinary, you know, call to action. So we have the title, we have some description, and then we just have a general button. So let me show you all how to recreate this using the Flexbox containers. So let's go ahead and go to a new section here. All right, but this time we're gonna select this one right here. Now we're just gonna throw all these elements together. We're just gonna throw them on there. We're gonna throw in a heading. Then we're going to put in some text editor. Then we're just gonna throw in a button. There we go, there it goes. And with the power of video editing, you guys can see I have now changed this to fit this scheme right here. So I just changed the font and the colors. I didn't really change anything of the position. I have now changed the fonts and everything to match these other color schemes up here. I just copied and pasted the style. That's all I did. Now let's make some more space on this container because uh, you can see how this is too scrunched. So first let's go ahead and go to uh, this container, right? And we're gonna change the minimum height. Now, sometimes there's a bug with Elementor. If you like type something in and you leave it, sometimes you can tell that nothing happens, right? I don't know why this is the case. You can see that uh, I set it for 80. Uh, you guys will have to actually manually drag this in here and that's where it actually starts to work guys. So uh, yeah, you know, I'm just the middle guy. So uh, I'll report that bug to Elementor, but um, that's how you can adjust the minimum heights. The next thing that I want to do is you can see here that the direction is vertical, right? And I want to keep it vertical because if I change this, it's going to, you know, look all distorted and stuff like that. So here we go. We have sets of vertical. Now I also want to center this content. And next we have align items and I want to align this in the center. And there you go. So now you'll see that this is perfectly aligned in the center of our landing page. Now I'm going to quickly add a little, uh, uh, add a background here because this is really bland, really boring. Let's go and add a quick little background image here. Okay, and there is our background. Now there's a few things I want to sort of talk about just in case you want to change stuff, right? Let's say, for example, you guys wanted to add another button. Now, if you add another button here, uh, you're gonna notice that it only goes below it, right? And there's no way on how you can align this. So if you wanna add another button, all you gotta do here is just add another container. And within this container, you're just going to put these buttons in the container here, right? There you go. And then from here, you're gonna control these two buttons. So just like we control this text, you'll now control these two buttons. So it's like, you know what? I want it horizontal and I also want it, oops, in the center, right? So that's how you can create uh, that style because many websites do use two buttons. Now, also you guys might notice that this is a little bit too long, right? Uh, on the first example, you'll see how it's a little bit tighter, right? So if it spreads across too much, what we can do is we can change the width of this entire section. So using these six dots up here, we'll go to the layout. Now I'm gonna say, you know what? I wanna reduce the width here. And you can keep reducing it until you sort of get an effect and style that you want, right? So I'll go ahead and just uh, put it, put it right to, I don't know, what's good there? Uh, 800, right? 800 is good. And then if this looks a little weird, you guys can change the alignment, right? So remember earlier how I mentioned that uh, sometimes you guys will have to manually change the alignment for the text. We'll change that. And we'll also go to the style and change that right there. So that's how you can recreate a landing page. So if you guys are building like a landing page or something and you want like just a traditional, you know, call to action, header text, that's how you guys would do it using the Flexbox container. So I hope that helped. Let's go on and go to the next example. All right, in this next example, I'll be showing you guys how to use the align content. Now, earlier in this video, you've noticed that we've pretty much used the direction, the justify content, align items, and then also like gap between elements. But we haven't really been using the align content. There is some uses for this, and I'll give you guys an example right here. So you can see here how we can actually control these elements within this box. So you'll see that there's 
a few different options, right? But most of you who are using this, when you guys use it, you probably saw that nothing was happening, right? So let me walk you through on how to use the wrap with the align content. All right, so let's walk you guys through this. So first I'll click on the plus and we're gonna click the two column row. And then we're gonna start throwing in some elements. But before I do that, I wanna make sure that this is a vertical just so they stack on top of each other. All right, so heading. And then we'll throw in the text editor. And then we're gonna throw in the button below that. Next, I wanna add in some space. So you guys notice that this is too tight right here, right? So I can't really even show you guys what we're gonna be doing because we need to make this a little bit larger. So for the edit container, I wanna make this a little bit larger, right? We'll just do like, we'll do 500 pixels. I think that's good. Now we're going to adjust the direction and then also the align items. So first I'm going to make this horizontal, right? So now we have these uh, three elements there. They're kind of scrunched up, looking weird. And now we're going to align the items in the center. And then I'm going to wrap it. And when I wrap it, it's now going to stack these elements in a specific style. So now we have the align content where we can go ahead and center this. We can use the flex start, the flex end, and these other various options. So uh, when I first used Flexbox, I'll be very honest, I was pretty much dumbfounded on the Align content, and it wasn't until I had to go through documentation and really learn how to use the Align content. And then I'm going to wrap it. And when I wrap it, it's now going to stack these elements in a specific style. So now we have the Align content where we can go ahead and center this, we can use the Flex Start, the Flex End, and these other various options. So uh, when I first used Flexbox, I'll be very honest, I was pretty much dumbfounded on the Align content, and it wasn't until I had to go through documentation and really learn how to use the Align content. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys do have any questions about the Elementor Flexbox, let me know in the comments below. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.